you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and attempt to solve the question on your own before listening on. We know that in order to raise the temperature of water from 23 degrees Celsius to the boiling point, which is 100 degrees Celsius, we're going to have to have, add some energy to the water. And we know that the amount of energy added, which we can call Q, is equal to the mass of the water times the specific heat times the change in temperature of the water. Now, the mass of the water was given to us directly. The specific heat is a known value. We can look that up. And then the temperature change is also known because we're raising the temperature from 23 degrees Celsius up to 100 degrees Celsius. And so we can actually plug in all the known values into this equation. If you prefer, you can write the change in temperature as the final temperature minus the initial temperature. So we'll go ahead and plug in the known values to calculate the amount of energy required to raise the temperature of the water to the boiling point. Notice we've used this value of 4,186 for the specific heat of water. When we plug this into our calculators, we should get approximately 1.61 times 10 to the power of 5 joules. We'll notice the unit is joules because the kilograms will cancel, as will the degrees Celsius, leaving us with just joules. Now, this energy is coming from the heating element of this coffee maker. And we know that the power produced by the coffee maker would equal the current multiplied by the potential produced, or the potential difference, I should say, produced by the coffee maker. We were given in the question the potential difference as well as the current, so we can simply plug in to get the power. And when we compute that, we can see that the power is equal to 240 watts. Now, it's important to understand that the watt is a joule per second. And so why don't we rewrite the watt in that form? And it turns out that we can combine this 240 joules per second with the amount of joules that was necessary to raise the temperature of water. And to do that, we just recognize that energy is equal to the power multiplied by the time. And we know that's true because the unit of energy is joules. The unit of power, as we just noted, is joules per second. And then the unit of time, of course, is seconds. So when we multiply joule per second times seconds, we can see the seconds would cancel out and we would have joules equals joules. Now, we have the energy as well as the power. So all we need to do is plug into this equation. And then when we divide both sides of the equation by 240 joules per second, we're going to see that the time is roughly 671 seconds. Now, if your question is asking for minutes rather than seconds, we can perform a very simple conversion. Because we know that one minute is equivalent to 60 seconds. And so if we multiply by that conversion factor, the seconds would cancel, leaving us with 11.2 minutes. So if you need the answer in minutes, this would be the final answer. And then if you can keep it in seconds, this would be the final answer. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please click the thumbs up and also subscribe so you can stay tuned for other videos. You can send in your own question to this email address and I'll do my best to post the answer to it on YouTube.